Hi, I'm Stock Investor Davis. Welcome to the channel and please subscribe. I want to continue the Supermicro story heading into its third quarter earnings, especially considering the stock price recently had a crash. I'll share my opinion on the topic. Additionally, I'll briefly go over my valuation of the company and provide a technical analysis. Starting with the video's focus, why did Supermicro's stock crash after announcing its intent to report its earnings on April 30th? Many journalists share the same sentiment, stating that because the company did not include an updated revenue and earnings guidance, that this must be the peak for the company. The article on screen includes a Wells Fargo insight that likely added unwarranted downward pressure to the stock price, first stating a reiteration of its equal weight rating and a price target of $960, continuing by saying Supermicro has paired the earnings release date with updated guidance seven of the last eight times with better than expected earnings and that this should be viewed negatively. Pausing here, I don't view this as a negative. I view it as routine. This is standard procedure for all public companies, and it's uncommon to receive updated revenue guidance. However, in Supermicro's case, the company has often provided an update in its revenue guidance in its recent past. Additionally, I investigated the claim of the company reporting updated revenue guidance over the past year. The article mentions two years but I checked the past year. The result is surprising. At the top, we see the most recent announcement for its upcoming quarter with no earnings update. On the bottom is the company's last quarter, which did provide an update in its revenue guidance, stating stronger sales up to $3.6 billion from a previous estimate of $2.8 billion and earnings per share updated to close to $5 per share compared to the previous guidance of near $4 per share. Two quarters ago, it's first quarter, 2024. This is the one quarter where the company didn't provide an update to its earnings guidance. When announcing initial guidance, the company states estimates of between 1.9 and 2.2 billion in revenue and earnings per share between $2.02 and $2.80. The company went on to produce 2.12 billion in revenue and 2.75 or $2.75 in earnings per share. Both figures on the high end, but within its guidance. I'm expecting the current quarter to be the same, that the company's results will be within its initial guidance range. Three quarters ago, we see the company did raise revenue and earnings guidance for its fourth quarter, 2023 initially expecting $1.7 billion and $1.9 billion in sales, with earnings between $2.13 and $2.65. Then updating the figures to over $2.1 billion in sales and earnings over $3.25 per share. Finally, one year ago for its third quarter, 2023, its updated revenue guidance was lower. Yes, lower, initially guiding for between 1.4 and 1.5 billion in revenue with earnings between $1.88 and $2.14 per share, then updating its guidance to 1.28 billion. The company's results being 1.28 billion in sales and $1.53 in earnings per share. This to me is the cherry on top. If the company wasn't going to meet its own guidance, it will tell us whether it's below or above the guidance the company will let us know based on its past. Now, here we are today, the company has not updated its earnings guidance. So to me, it's safe to assume the company will do exactly as they said, revenue between 3.7 billion and 4.1 billion and earnings per share between $4.79 and $5.64. A few more insights before switching to the valuation and analysis. First, KeyBank Capital has initiated coverage of Supermicro with a current price target of 
$765. This is currently below the $975 average among the analysts covering the company. Wrapping up the news portion, I came across this article that provides some insights into Supermicro's industry. According to Bank of America, Supermicro controls 10% of the AI server market, further stating that the figure could grow to 17% over the next three years. In addition, Global Market Insights expects the AI server market to have an average growth of 18% between the year 2024 and 2032. Finally, the analysts are projecting Supermicro's revenue to have an average growth of 46% between 2023 and 2026, and an average earnings growth of 41%. This should lend some comfort to the Supermicro stock investor. Pivoting to Supermicro's daily chart and starting with its valuation. Currently, I'm using a 60 to 80 earnings multiple to value the company, as indicated by the red box here and the green box here. The green box being my estimated bottom of the fair value range, roughly $770 at 60 times earnings, and the red box being the top of my fair value range, roughly $1,020 at 80 times earnings. This multiple range is based on utilizing company comparables that have similar margins and high revenue growth. A video with further detail is linked in the description. Notice how based on company's guidance going into next quarter and its physical year end, my fair value range is trending upward. Any forward projection is liable to change as new information is available. Switching to a technical analysis, when we look back to the beginning of 2023, the two things that stand out are the two radical increases in stock price. One here during May through July 2023, and the second during January and March of 2024. While it's not a gradual uptrend, able to be mapped out, such as we've seen in other companies, this to me is considered an uptrend as it has this massive rise up and quick crash, followed by a consolidation period, leading us into 2024 where we see its second big run-up and now currently in a crash showing similarities to its previous rally. Now focusing on more recent times, 2024 specifically, I mentioned the strong rally between January and March, then during the second half of March and up until now, the back half of April, the stock is in a downtrend. I also added support points near 725 and 875 and added resistance points near 1050 and 1180 with some touch points near those prices 1050 being the strongest of the points mentioned in terms of short-term resistance taking all these factors into consideration to see the stock trading around 790 i like the price heavily favoring the buyer this is primarily because within my valuation range, it's trading near the bottom at about 61 times earnings. Then within the technical analysis, it has a long-term uptrend intact, which bodes well for the company, even while currently experiencing a short-term downtrend. Some numbers that I'm looking at in terms of a buyer include 730. This has slight support with two touch points, 770, this is the bottom of my fair value range. We have 875, that has some support with three touch points, and 980, this is the bottom of my adjusted fair value range considering next quarter's guidance. Some numbers I'm looking at in terms of a seller include 1,020, this is the top of my fair value range. 1,050 has some resistance with three touch points. 1,180 has slight resistance with two touch points. 
and then 100, 1,300, this is the top of my adjusted fair value range considering next quarter's guidance. That wraps this video up. State your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe.